Hi, I'm Vicki Hefner, the Education Curator at the Berks History Center, and we're excited to be participants in Pennsylvania's Americana Fest. And what we'd like to do is feature some of our musical artifacts that we have here at the Berks History Center. And one of them is this lovely portrait here of Daniel Rose, who was a tall case clock maker in Berks County, possibly the best known in Berks County. He lived on Fifth Street in uh, Reading in the late 17 and early 1800s. And what I like the most about this portrait is lots of times they wanted to give hints to people living 100 or 200 years ago as to what they wanted to be remembered for. And we do know that Daniel Rose was a tall case clockmaker, but by studying his portrait, we also know that he was a very fine musician. And in fact, he played about two dozen different instruments. The other interesting thing about this portrait is if you notice, he has dandruff on his shoulders. And uh, when he originally had this painted, he had his uh, head painted with a wig. And when it was finished, he didn't like the way that he looked wearing the, rig, the wig. And so he asked the painter to come back and that was Jacob Whitman, and they painted his hair, but forgot to remove the powder from the wig that he had been wearing. This piece of furniture that looks like a chest of drawers is actually a house organ, attributed to Andrew Krauss, in the Oley Township area, circa 1820. Built to resemble a chest of drawers, this pipe organ was probably made by Andrew Krauss. The top drawers lift up to expose the keyboard, while the lower drawers are removable to gain access to the pipes. A foot pedal operates the bellows. The organ includes three ranks of pipes and tow boards for two additional ranks that were never completed and it's made of maple wood. Hello, we're in the Victorian parlor at the Berks History Center, and we are looking at a very lovely Gruber organ. Most people are familiar with the Grubers who made wagons, the Gruber Wagon Works, which is on the property of the Berks County Heritage Center. Uh, but there was also a branch of the family that made organs, such as the one that you see here. It does need a little bit of restoration work. But next to the Gruber organ is a talking machine. And interestingly, about 10 years ago, trustee Rick Politica and I decided to see if this talking machine still talked. And the cylinders that you see on its stand is what makes it talk or play music, and uh, it needs to be wound. The drawers are all full of musical cylinders. What we also learned is that the horn that is on this talking machine is not the correct horn. It is too big for that talking machine. However, it is the only horn that the Berks History Center has in its collection which is why it's attached to this particular talking machine. The Berks History Center continues to celebrate Americana Fest, and I'd like you to examine our Regina Music Box that's located in the second floor of our museum. Uh, Regina Music Boxes are about 100, 125 years old. Uh, you can see that they look very much like a record player from the 1950s and 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, when I have school children in here, though, they really don't know what a record player is, so then you sort of describe what a, a CD player might do. And this beautiful instrument sounds wonderful. I hope you enjoy it.
named the Diefenbach organ. It is believed that it was started construction in 1770. Historians are not positive about that. However, they do believe it was completed in the early 1800s. In fact, on the back of this organ in chalk is the year 1803. So it's possible that it wasn't started until the early 1800s and then completed in 1803. John Jacob Diefenbach lived near Bethel, Berks County, and he was an ordinary farmer who decided to build an organ. And he walked all the way to Philadelphia to a church that had recently had an organ sent there. And he studied it and he drew pictures and he took notes and he came back to Berks County and he built this beautiful organ that was at Epler's church for most of its life. When Epler's church near Leesport replaced their organ in part payment to the great grandson of John Jacob Diefenbach was this organ. And then the son of Thomas Diefenbach, who replaced the organ, Victor Diefenbach, donated this to the Berks History Center, I believe in the 1920s, if not 1930s. It still does play today, and I love this artifact. It's got a great history. t-shirt from one of our magical history tours that the History Center did for a number of years. First at the Liederkranz and then at the Evergreen Country Club. And this is our Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And as you can see, we've got lots of people inducted into our Hall of Fame. And it was really a lot of fun doing those concerts with Dave Klein. I would also like to add to tune in to other videos of some of these musicians playing that have been made over the last year. Hi, my name is Benjamin Neely. I'm the executive director of the Berks History Center and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's video. There's lots of ways you can support local history, and I hope that you saw the importance of doing so today. One of the ways that you can support us is by clicking on the donate button that's attached to this post and making a contribution there. Another way is to go to our website, berkshistory.org, and there you can become a member. And one of the best benefits of our membership is the historical review of Berks County. It's a quarterly magazine. It is a very high quality magazine, and I really think that you'd enjoy it. And the third way that you can support us is to follow us on social media. Look for at Burke's History. Thanks again so much for tuning into our show, and we hope that you have good health and safety. <laughs>